once again to Crazy Comics and Stories. It's me, your charming and delightful old Uncle Rat Bastard. And at the other end of the series of tubes and wires we call the internets is Joe Crazy Rider. How you doing today, Joe? I'm doing fine. How are you? I, I'm over here. I'm having my, my chips. And, uh, oh, here we go. And, of course, we got some Google information here. Did you know that... That Spider-Man was actually uh, originally this this dude that you know I don't know what I'm taking anyway. So uh, uh, bad joke. The, the, it, the, it's not Joe. It, it's an incredible simulation, but it it just it it's not Joe. Who the flame of blue hoodie am I talking to? I'm not telling you. <sighs> I know I know who it is. I know who it is. I can tell you. Well, I know who that is. Hi. Ladies and gentlemen, Wolfie B. Bad is on the show. Yes, I am. <laughs> and, and and usually that means that his, uh, I don't know, handler, trainer, Sidekick. Uh, uh, appendage, Sidekick. Dangerous Dan Moore is with them because Joe is on vacation. <clears throat> Slacker. Yeah, pretty much. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> And there are a couple reasons that Dan's on the show. One is, you know, the the, the premise of the show is your best friends talking about their hobbies, talk about their lives, talk about funny books. And D- Dan and I have known each other for more more years than I am going to admit just, in publicly. Don't, don't tell anybody how long we've known each other. <laughs> don't do the math. <laughs> and the other reason is with Joe gone, you know, we we got something coming up on Saturday. Yes, we do. What 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 are we doing this Saturday, Dan? We are doing Lion Con. He said it. He wanted me to say it. I don't care. Okay, now, we have Lion Con. Yes, Lion Con up in St. Cloud at the... I've already forgotten what the what the place is. Uh, the, the River's Edge Convention Center. River's Edge Convention Center, that place. It's going to be awesome. It's 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. There's going to be multiple people. Crazy Comics is going to be there. Lionheart Games, who's running it's going to be there. Of course, I'm going to be there. Daniel's going to be there with more creations. Halfling Crafts are going to be there. Legends of Chaos are going to be there. Multiple gaming. A main stage where I'm going to take it and take you people to town. It's going to be great. It's awesome. Roar for Lion King. This is going to be my first panel ever. No, it's not. What other panel have I done? You've done some at SpringCon. Yeah, but nobody showed up for that. That doesn't count. That's not the point. <laughs> I've done a panel with absolutely nobody in the audience before. <laughs> I, I, you, I should say that at, at our peak, we had five people. Yes, yes, we did. Well, and, and we brought one of the people in the audience up onto the panel because he asked questions. And we're like, ah, sure, come on up. Ask your questions here. <laughs> Which is great, because the whole concept of that panel was that way you were going to be recording a show, and then the recorder didn't work. Well, it's more the equipment they had was – I'm sorry. They had some PV speakers that somebody's band had in the 70s, <laughs> and a microphone from the same time. It's like, oh, well, can we plug in an MP3 recorder? And we just got stared at. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so this one's going to be a little different. This one, uh, we're going to set up the uh, laptop, uh-huh. and we're going to live stream. Yeah. That... And um, I don't know. We, we, we're, we, Dan and I were kind of talking about what, what in the Flame and Blue Hootie we're going to fill two hours with. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, well, for my hour, we could talk about uh, comic books and role-playing games and how they intersect. And maybe we could talk about how to do a podcast. Yeah, there you go. Not that I know what I'm doing. In all honesty, for my hour, I'll be in, you know, just making it up as I go. I'm sure Wolfie will take over most of it. <laughs> Hopefully we get some questions. I, it would be nice. <laughs> you know, I've gone into multiple panels where it's like, okay, it's going to be audience participation. This is going to be awesome. All right, what questions do you have? Uh, and even Wolfie, it's like, what questions do you have for me? And they just sit there and they stare at me. I'm like, okay, this isn't going as planned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what it's like when it's like, okay, I'm I'm going to kind of be winging it off what people say, and then they don't say anything. Yep. <laughs> so uh, this time we're, we're going in with a plan. Right, which means people will have questions. Yeah, oh, well, hopefully. Yeah. Because then we can use the plan later. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you're the guest of honor. Yeah. And the joke I've been using is, wow. They must not have a lot of honor. No. <laughs> As I pretty much put it, you know, 
almost any time that somebody wants me as a guest of honor probably means they're desperate. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's like, okay, we're here at the bar. It's uh, 20 minutes to close in time. What's Dan up to? Exactly. <laughs> it's really bad when I've had a, a guy who does guest of honor, uh, who's in charge of bringing in their guests of honor, has come to me and says, yeah, I always keep you in my back pocket. It's like, oh, what? <laughs> like, oh okay, why is that? Because you're available and you're cheap. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You get paid for this? No, that's the point. <laughs> oh, damn it. Other people do. I don't. <laughs> How am I ever going to make a profit with this damn thing? If you figure it out, you let me know. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Next year, I'm a guest of honor at a place that will hopefully get me a lot of... Uh, uh, um... There's a word for it. Visualization or whatever. People will hopefully notice me more, and I'll get to some of these conventions that actually will pay me. <laughs> And uh, we're going to start doing conventions here on the podcast. I'm showing up. I'm live streaming. I've learned a lot over the last uh, two times doing it. Cool. And uh, I, I think I'm going to have to have stuff in my back pocket, too, because, boy, when, when you get there and nobody's dropping by and the artists are busy, mm -hmm. it, you know, nobody wants to hear me blather on about funny books to myself for, for like, five hours, because it's almost like the uh, Apu doing the, the epic shift at the... Uh, at the Quickie Mart. <laughs> you running around doing your B impersonations? Except uh, more I'm, I'm running around doing my Bill Hicks impersonations. <laughs> or Mark Maron. Life is shit, everyone. Life is shit, and everyone is terrible, and you need to hate humanity. <laughs> That's what happens when you leave me alone for too long. <laughs> Ooh, wait a second, I have a call here. I, I think it might be for you, actually. One second here. Okay. Yeah, okay. Hello? Hold on, hold on a minute. Hold on. I have to... You want to talk? Okay. Hold on a minute. All right. I'm putting him on. Corey, I hear that you might be having some problems. <laughs> I, I, I thought you wanted to kill me. Well, n not if I can get on a live stream. This would be wonderful. I can... Uh, you and I, we can talk about the history of these funny books that you keep talking about. Um, and how, how they've derived, and we can look at the costumes that are going by, because, of course, I know every single one of them and where they're from. So, wait, wait, here, I'm going to give you an assignment. When you complete the assignment, come back and we'll have you on the show, okay? All right, what is, what is that? I want you to do a complete history of the Legion of Superheroes explaining all of the reboots. Oh, th that's not a problem. I can do that now. All right. All right. Let's go. Okay. What it is is the Legion of Superheroes are a bunch of superheroes that ga come together to form a legion. And unfortunately, they keep having power outages, so they're computer reboots. I, I, I think you need to go back to, to, to the wiki, to, the, to the, 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 the Wikipedia. The what? Oh, gosh, the line went dead. I, I, Dan, I don't know what happened. I don't either. I, I'm not sure what, if he hung up or, uh, no, uh, oh, no, I just lost signal. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. So, oh, hold on, call coming in. I'm just going to ignore it for now. <clears throat> okay, good. Yeah, that's what I do with most of the calls that I get. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've experienced hey, hey, it more hey. than once. <laughs> I, I've answered your phone call a couple of times, I think, maybe. Hold on, I have to think about that. Have I ever called you? <laughs> <laughs> well, the people want to hear us talk about the comic books, too. So uh, one of the things I thought I would ask you. Yeah. Um, you're on the Marvel Unlimited, last I heard. Are you still getting that? Yes, yes I am. And what do you, first off, what do you read it on? Um, I, what is it that I read it on? <laughs> uh, it's, it's a Google tablet. It's a, um, an older one, but the thing is it, it's got enough for what I use it for, which is usually only actually the, um, the Marvel Unlimited. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but you don't even play the damn Simpsons game anymore. No, no, I don't. Well, I can't cheat anymore and it bugs me. Um, <laughs> but I play, I, I play Avengers Academy now. Um, <laughs> Well, it's funny that the game outlasted the comic. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, 
so I usually read it on the Google uh, the Google Pad, it, which is just the right size for me uh, to have the whole page up, which is nice. So instead of having to do the smart panel thing because the smart panel thing isn't smart. Um, it's better than it used to be, but I still – you don't really get a sense of the page itself. Right. And if you're reading older comics, it really does not work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, um, what have I been reading on it? Uh, actually, I am in the middle of rereading all of the Infinity Gauntlet, War, Abyss, Crus- or Crusade, Abyss, uh, Infinity, those comics again, just because I was feeling nostalgic for Thanos. Okay. Um, but uh, for the more recent ones, I've been reading the Star Wars, uh, the newer Star Wars stuff. Of course, they're six months behind, so you know I'm well behind that, the curve there, but... But you're able to read Vader down. Yep, I just finished that, actually, um, which was, I thought was really good. Um, and I've, it kind of depends on the mood I'm in. I, I've done some Guardians of the Galaxy. I tried to read I tried to read The Vision, uh, which I know you really liked, but I just, I don't know. I couldn't get into it. It's, um, I, to me, it, it's one of those series that actually work as individual issues, and it's very different from everything else that's being published, and it's the creepiest damn comic I've ever read. Yeah, it is very it, – it definitely is uh, a different take on everything, and uh, I think it's just not the type of thing that I'm into. Yeah, I can understand that because there is this feeling of, oh, things can't get any worse. Then you read the next issue, and oh, yeah, it got worse yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where I don't know where the character can come back from this. No, Uh if if they're actually going to even try. <laughs> yeah. Except we do know that he's in the Avengers coming up over the next few months. So I don't know what they're doing, but uh, I trust the captain, trust the crew. Yep. Not that they've ever given us a reason not to, but um, always keep hope. Yes. Hope, hope is all we have. Sometimes we, we we cling to it by our fingernails. That's true. Unfortunately, I bite my fingernails, so I fall off a lot. <laughs> <laughs> now, for me, the, the, I'm really into the digital comics because it's so much easier for me to read, and I have so much crap. And re- any more of the comics I buy are the stuff that I want to keep forever, you know, the hard covers and, and all that. What sort of stuff do you actually spend your hard-earned uh, cash money on? Uh, well... <laughs> My wife. Um, Thank you. Good afternoon. <laughs> Smart man. Yes. Um, <laughs> lately, I've actually been trying to get some of the the rebirth stuff so I can see if it's going to be worth to actually continue with. Um, and I just recently picked up some uh, Transformer comics because it's been a while since I've actually been reading those, and I think I'm going to start going back and reading the uh, picking those up uh, in collections because. They they do this uh, – IDW does this awesome thing where they take all of the comics and put them into a collected edition in chronological order. So even if it's one that like takes place uh, sort of in the past, um, they will actually put it in that order. They'll put that one in the back or in the – like in the first one even if it came out three months after the first the, – the other comics. So they'll put that. They'll actually you can read it in order, so um, you really get a concept of the story, which is nice. Um, but uh, I think I'm going to be doing those. Mainly, it's the ones that I will actually spend the hard-earned money on uh, are the ones that I can't get on uh, Marvel Unlimited that I want to read. So, yeah. Now I know that uh, I picked up the first issue of ROM. Okay. And IDW is going to be creating a Hasbro universe, so get, spoiler alert, G.I. Joe shows up at the end. Okay. And there, you do know that I read a G.I. Joe Transformers comic, right? I'm not surprised you didn't, but no, I did not know that. Uh, yes, the Tom Scal- – I always mispronounce his last name – Scioli. Okay. He drew G.I. Joe versus Transformers. He is a Kirby worshiper, so his stuff – 
just it looks like Kirby to the point where DC's just hired him to do a superpowers series. Oh, nice. <laughs> but I loved his art, but like most Transformers stuff, there's so many characters that I know nothing about. I just kind of got lost and just went, oh, this art's pretty. <laughs> As a huge Transformers fan, what do you think of the fact that they're jamming them all together? Well, I... Oh, I, I <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound positive. Um, I don't know. And the reason I say that is because um, it, it could be really good. Because, I mean, I, 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 G.I. Joe, I've enjoyed G.I. Joe, what I've read of them. They're putting Mask in there, and I loved that cartoon. Um, I have uh, I haven't read Rom other than the ones that were in Marvel. Um, well, those are really the only ones. Yeah, that's true. Um, so if it's done well, if it's written well, I think it'll be very cool. However, it will be very easy for it not to be. <laughs> Because if they're just trying to force it all in together, it's just not going to work. Um, I mean, they're they're awesome, awesome um, ideas on their own, but trying to mix them all could be a real difficult task. I mean, you've got Mask, whose cars sort of transform with actual Transformers. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, suddenly they don't look as cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, my car can turn into a plane. My my car can turn into a 50-foot robot that can just smash your car. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, you know, that for me, it's like, oh, wow, the Micronauts are going to team up with the Transformers. And, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to clean the algae off. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, Everybody wants a universe, and just speaking from experience, there have been two universes that have worked, Marvel and DC. Yes. However, I will say Transformers, its own universe at the moment, is working really well. That's because it's just one, you know, it's a series of books, but it's just one property. Yeah. You know, Malibu tried a universe, Image tried a universe, Technoverse tried a universe, oh, yeah. everybody, uh, Continuity tried one, Epic, uh, not Epic, Eclipse tried one, yeah. and I think the big problem is that when you have all these crossovers, you get people to go, well, I just want to read this book, I don't want to have to buy four others, it's bad enough when Marvel does it, but now everybody's doing it. Yeah. And a lot of the times, the the I mean, like Marvel and DC, their worlds were always connected, even if they weren't um, mixing into each other's um, stories. They still have D DC wasn't. DC wasn't okay. Yeah, um, what it was back, um, you know, you had the Justice Society right in the forties. But DC itself back in the 40s was two different publishing companies. It was National Periodicals and All-American. Uh -huh. And if you look at the Justice Society, you know, they didn't have Superman and Batman and because they were published by National Periodicals. And then when you got into the 50s, the ed each editor kind of ran their own show. So you would have in the Julie Schwartz books, okay, Flash and Green Lantern are friends, and, uh, you know, these characters would meet. And then over at, you know, you had uh, World's Finest, which was Superman and Batman, but Superman didn't show up in Green Lantern. They didn't even mention him. Uh, in the Batman comics themselves, they didn't mention any other superheroes other than the ones that were in the backup stories. It wasn't until, like, the late 60s, early 70s that they started going okay, we're going to need to start doing what Marvel does. Because even when you read the Justice League in the 60s, they didn't refer to anything going on in anybody else's book at all. Okay. So, and if you read those Brave and the Bold Batman team-ups, oh my God, they were a mess. <laughs> <laughs> Batman teams up with Wildcat, and it's just, oh, they're just hanging out. It's like, well, Wildcat's on Earth, too. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, Batman with Sergeant Rock. Here's Batman in World War II. Well, that'd make him in his 50s now. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not in his 50s. 
<laughs> Bob Haney, who was the, the in charge of those books, he, he often would tell people that he did not give a shit about continuity, and neither did the eight-year-olds who read the books. Right. <laughs> It's funny because we, uh, uh, my stepdaughter actually the other day came down and was talking about the TV show Gotham. And she's like, I'm so confused because I don't remember this happening in the other stories. I'm like, no, you, you can't, you can't watch the show and try to tie it in with the comics. But, but no, no, think about this. <laughs> okay. Batman's eight at the moment and all his villains are showing up. That means when he becomes Batman, they're like in their fifties. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I understand that. I would, I, I would watch the Hulk TV show and just be pissed because uh-huh. it's like, oh, the Hulk turned over a truck. No, he picks up tanks by the by the barrel and swings them around and tosses them for miles. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did that. It was just off camera. No, they didn't even do it off camera. It's like, oh, Hulk's going to turn over a truck. Ooh, there's our big stunt for the episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, they didn't even allude to it. It was just off camera. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, not once did Hulk say Hulk smash. He didn't say a damn thing. He just growled. Yeah, well, you know. I was mad that he didn't say Hulk smash. And thank goodness in both the movies he gets to say Hulk smash. <laughs> That's important. These things are important. I understand. I understand. It's very important. It's very important, Corey. Your opinions are important. Well, it, the continuity. Yeah, no, I'm telling you, you are correct. This is a very important thing, and everyone needs to know that. <laughs> well, look at how – look at the cog- cognitive dissonance it gave your stepdaughter. <laughs> She now watches the show in in a state of uh, anxiety. Yes, what I don't understand because she doesn't read comics. <laughs> that doesn't matter. <laughs> she knows they exist. She knows these things. Things, yes. I feel bad for the people who are, you know, they watch the CW TV shows. Yeah. And then they go to the movies. Oh, God. Because <laughs> the Flash movie will have nothing to do with the Flash TV show. And all I could think is, that's the dumbest goddamn idea I've ever heard. Oh, yeah? Have you heard they may be trying to fix that? Uh, yeah. Have you heard this? I have not heard it, but I've, I'm frightened because there, there is, I have my copy of Batman vs. Superman, the, the director's cut uh-huh. DV. A Blu-ray, and I've had it since it came out, and it just sits there, haunting me, <laughs> because it's like Schrodinger's cat. Until I watch it, it's not good or bad. There you go. It could be good, it could be bad, but I haven't watched it yet. You should keep Schrodinger's Batman just like that. But if I open it up, the the, the cat could be dead. You you will collapse the wave function. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That is my favorite, one of my favorite jokes, by the way. Schrodinger's driving along. Cop pulls him over. Cop says, can you open the trunk? Schrodinger goes, no, I don't want to open the trunk. Cop says, you have to open the trunk. So he opens the trunk. Cop looks in the trunk, comes back, says, you know, you have a dead cat in your trunk? Schrodinger says, I do now! (laughs) (laughs) Nerdy science jokes, ladies and gentlemen. Uh Nothing but the best here on Crazy Comics and Stories. There you go. (laughs) <laughs> uh, um, so what, what? How how are they thinking of fixing this? Earth one, Earth two? No. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know the details. But the thing is, Superboy punching a wall. Probably. Uh, rumor has it that the movie version of the Flash is going to be showing up in the TV series. I've heard they're doing a Flashpoint thing. Yeah. So they're probably going to try to explain it in, you know, that they're actually two different universes. Well, that would be okay, though. Yeah. Again, as long as they do it okay. (laughs) It's still stupid. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, DC has been wonderful about trying to explain the different history. Yeah, they're great with their continuity. Why have there been all these continuity errors? Superboy's punching a wall. Really? Mm-hmm. That that's what you're going with? <laughs> Bang! Oh, not anymore. What? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Say what you want about Marvel. Yeah. They have not done the continuity reboot even when they've had the chance. 
Yeah. Because Secret Wars gave them a perfect chance to do a reboot, and they didn't. No, no, they didn't, did they? And uh, what I'm reading on the Marvel Unlimited is all the Secret Wars tie-ins, because good lord, there were a lot of them. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I I was reading those a a few months ago. Oh, my God. (laughs) Some of them are really good. Old Man Logan. Uh Uh-huh. I thought Old Man Logan was great, even though it's like each – it almost felt like the old DC Challenge, because DC Challenge would end on a cliffhanger, and then another creative team would do the next issue. This was a 12-issue miniseries, and the idea was that somebody would write the first issue and leave a cliffhanger. And then the next writer, the next creative team, would resolve that cliffhanger and end on a cliffhanger. But by the third or fourth issue, you could tell that the writers were just – fucking with each other because there were like five cliffhangers. <laughs> Actually, I, uh, uh, we were at um, Spring Con, or no, Fall Con last year, um, and another artist friend of mine was a, uh, who does uh, Falandor. We were walking around, we were looking at stuff, and they, we found this little book, um, which was um, like blank comic pages, but the Boxes were already all written in. And so what we started doing is I would do a panel and then he would do a panel and then I would do a panel. And and, <laughs> and we started just fucking with each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like, it becomes a competition. Of how can I screw you? Yeah, and a lot of it was, well, then I decided to, <laughs> then I decided to tell the truth. And this is what it was. But then I decided not to. <laughs> a few minutes later, and then I decided to say what it was. <laughs> so you broke the rule of improv. Well, no, we we did it. We did it. But the thing is, we kept going back and forth with finding excuses of why not to actually finish it. Yeah, but you know what the rule of improv is. Oh, right? Yeah, it's yes. Say always say yes. Yes and yes and yes. Sorry. Uh, created by Del Close. He's the guy who created that. Yep. The only pro- the only problem with it is that sometimes some people when they when they try to get into improv think that means you have to say yes to everything. It's like no, you can say no. You just ke- make sure that it makes sense from what happened before, and that you open it up for the next person. Right. So, um, I've d- I've I've done a lot of improv, and and that's some of the funnest stuff to do. Except for when you get somebody who then it's like, oh, you were supposed to say yes. Like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes, was it funny? <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the things we have not talked about a lot on the show here, you used to work at The Source. Yes, yes, I did. And, um, well, first off, since we got LionCon coming up, yeah. you and I... We we talked to to the head the head cheese the top dog the top man the grand poobah of Lion Con Roar! and uh, he he gave us some info about the convention gave us about a half hour of his time and here it is so I have with with us uh, Justin Willard who is the brains behind Lion Con I wouldn't say so much uh, brains as in just like trying to get everything put into a box. You know, okay. Uh, uh, I've never actually like done it on this size before, like this kind of scale. So we'll we'll see we'll see how it ends up here. I think it's going to be really good. So I've I've done a lot of research and I've went to a lot of other cons. So it's kind of just kind of mimicking and you know and stealing good ideas from from other ones. So <laughs> I was going to ask, have you done other conventions? Maybe not ones this big, but smaller ones. Uh, yeah, we used to do like a Granite City game days around here, um, so I, I was on the board for that, and we kind of set up some some game stuff for that, and that ran for for quite a while. And then the guy that uh, was actually the the leader on it, he uh, he moved on to greener pastures, I guess. So we didn't have anything coming up this year, so uh, I started planning this like back in like January. So I'm like, I need to fill fill this gap. And this is a pretty big uh, convention hall you're using. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, I, think it, I think they said it was like around twenty four thousand square feet or something like that. So it's pretty big. Yeah, and you've got a lot of stuff planned. But I also have on the line your guest of honor, 
Daniel Moore. Yeah. And how, how did you pick Dan for the guest of honor? <laughs> well, see, I had a bunch of a bunch of my guys. They went down to Detour, and then one of my good friends uh, comes up here all the time. He plays uh, Dragon Ball Z and stuff. He has, he's actually security at Detour, and he highly recommended getting in contact with uh, Daniel. Which meant, really, he was just desperate. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'm like, all right, guys, let's go down there, see if there's anybody like that's interested, you know, in doing some stuff, doing, you know, all this kinds of stuff. Let's put up some posters, and, you know, let's, let's gauge our interest at some of these other events. And, and then uh, the only card he came back with was, was more, I think it was a more creations card, and he's like, call these people. And I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dan, we know he's desperate. He's having, he's having crazy comics and stories there. Well, that's true, too. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got, a, you've got a lineup of gaming people. You've got uh, all kinds of dealers. What sort, when somebody walks in the door at LionCon... Mm-hmm. What are what, what is going to assault their senses? I want to assault their senses all the time, uh, uh, right away. By the way, that's Wolfie be bad. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be assaulting as many people as I can, and uh, they'll probably smack me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you know, like when we open the doors, I'm you know, I I'm kind of like uh, I kind of like putting on like a performance and stuff. I don't know if I'm gonna have like. Music started like right away, like I don't know, some Fall Out Boy or something, you know, real loud. So as soon as the doors open, I just like envision like some smoke and loud music and lights. But basically, what they're gonna do is they're just gonna end up running into whoever booth 101 is and 102, and then all those all those booths and walk along there. So I'm trying to plan it so that people will like disperse evenly throughout the vendors and make their way kind of back towards the gaming area and then, you know, kind of set up shop in front of the, the main stage and stuff. So, well, hopefully hopefully that'll work out. I mean, I got... Uh, I could tell you who's who's right there who's going to be assaulting people. Well, that'd be great. Uh, let's see. Well, you looked that up, Justin. Now, am I correct in understanding that Bumblebee will be there in the morning? Um, actually, we had some scheduling conflicts, so I had to remove that event. I'm still currently trying to find another copy of the car, because there's a couple different versions um, that we we're kind of looking at. But uh, the the original one that we had confirmed for coming could no longer show up, so that kind of kind of stinks. I mean, there's like, uh, you know, I could get like, a, you know, one of those old bugs, you know, and stripe down it, you know, or something, you know. Like the original Bumblebee, but yeah. Oh, when I ran the Minneapolis convention, I was in charge during the early years, and we had everything that could go wrong did, including one year. Well, there were a couple years where we invited, and our big name guest would call like the day before and say, "Yeah, I can't make it." Oh. <laughs> so not only it's like, "Oh, great, we don't have John Romita Jr.," and we had to eat the cost of his plane ticket and hotel. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and that's when you just kind of you know there's a reason i quit doing it in 86 it was like okay i i'm tapping out i'm done i can't do this anymore. <laughs> so anybody who runs a convention or or works on a convention at a high level i have a lot of respect for because it is not easy you're juggling guests you're juggling dealers you're juggling the venue did you realize that it would be as big a project when you took it on? Um, you know, I had I had a pretty general idea, and in the beginning, I had you know a great, great like set of people that were helping me out. And as the the days continued and the months went by, I started losing them one by <laughs> one to other responsibilities and other things that they had going on in their lives. And you know, now it's down to you know me and and uh, my girlfriend Alyssa and. Uh, uh, my graphic designer, Colleen. So it's just kind of been the three of us, and a lot of the organization and putting the stuff together has, like, you know, fallen on me. And then, you know, Alyssa's been doing a lot of footwork. You know, she's been talking to other businesses, like, locally, getting our flyers posted up, you know, trying to get stuff for raffles and all that kinds of good stuff, too. So, I mean, yeah, it's 
it's it's a lot more probably than I anticipated doing alone. I will I will definitely say that. <laughs> <laughs> But you've got a lot of stuff there. You've got a gaming setup now. I, Dan, you could probably take over on this part because I have not been to a gaming convention ever. I am primarily comic books. Dan knows much more about gaming than I do. The only gaming I do anymore is is with Dan. Well, uh, let's see. I've been to a couple gaming things, but it's actually been a while. I mean, uh, gaming conventions, but it's been a while. What games are you planning on having uh, done other than Pokemon Go? I saw that was a big thing. That yeah, that's probably that's huge. Like I wasn't even planning on you know publicizing that. I just wanted to get the event up and then closer like release it. But like people started finding it and sharing it and inviting people, and I'm like, well, all right, that's fine. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I was just gonna like keep it in our events thing, and then like I was gonna like schedule it to like broadcast at a you know better time, you know, than like midnight or whenever I created it. <laughs> Yeah, that that's definitely. Oh God, that didn't even uh, show up until after you had already been in the major planning stages, right? Yeah. Well, I was actually uh, who was talking to me about it, and they're like, "You should do a Pokemon walk and like just double back on you know the success of Pokemon Go that's happening right now." And I was like, "You know, that's a fantastic idea. Let's do it." So, you know, we kind of went around to some local businesses downtown near the uh, the convention center. And, uh, you know, kind of coerced them into, hey, you know, you want to join in on this and throw up some lures and stuff, and we'll just light up downtown and bring everybody some business, hopefully, with, with this polka walk. And, you know, a lot of them were pretty receptive to it. So Very nice. I hope to find a Mewtwo. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> uh, what other games are you then uh, planning on working on or having uh, going in the back? I know you said Pathfinder is going to be there. It's going to be doing something. Yep, Pathfinder Society. They actually have like eight tables of society play. Um, and we actually got uh, official convention support from them. So it's an official Pathfinder Society convention. So nice. that's cool. So those those aren't too easy to get. No. Um, we well, also got, cool. got a few tables of uh, the Dungeons & Dragons Adventure League. Uh, yeah. We have, which is like the Pathfinder Society alternative, I guess. It's pretty yeah. similar, just for D&D. Um, we have Fantasy Flight Games. They're going to be up and running uh, five tables of games all day. Nice. They're, um, they're actually right right near where I am. <laughs> yeah, so I, it was... It was a little difficult, like, organizing and getting them to come. Like, I felt like I was just jumping through miles and miles of red tape to, like, try and even find the right person to talk to, who then eventually didn't even have a phone, so it was just all email. <laughs> so, I'm like, oh, okay, so, like, this guy that's the head of your department that goes to convention and, and runs games doesn't have a phone. I'm like, this is going to be great. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... I mean, think about it. Gamers sometimes have problems with technology. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We have uh, one table of Legends of Chaos that's going to be running all day. It's Legends of Chaos 101. And for those of you that aren't familiar with that, he's actually a local game developer. He lives up here in Sock Rapids, and he makes this pretty cool uh, collectible card game that he's going to be promoting at LionCon, which uh, he's going to be doing a tournament later on in the day, um, and everybody's basically getting free stuff to play in this tournament. So that's going to be super awesome. Very cool. Um, we also have Atlas Games. Okay. Um, so though they're going to be doing some uh, games all day. I think they're going to be doing it at their booth, though, because I think they only got one dude coming up. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I, I mean, I, I don't know if you guys are familiar with like Gloom or Three Cheers for Masters or Once Upon a Time. But oh yeah, they're the creators of all those those games, and they're they're right out of um, the cities too. So yeah, they uh, they've done quite a few, uh, which are nice uh, and uh, fun 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 quick games to play. So yeah. Um, other than that, I mean, a few things that we're still working on that we haven't quite confirmed yet is uh, AEG uh, coming up to do a bunch of game tables and stuff like that. 
But uh, yeah, that's I think that's the only one that we're really waiting on confirmation of attendance. So it's getting close. I don't know if they're gonna make it into the brochure. <laughs> if they <laughs> later now, but. <laughs> Yeah, when we release this, it is one week until the convention, and Dan's going to be there with his setup. And uh, Dan, are we going to have a book? We will have a pre-sale. The uh, the printer took longer to get the um, the uh, first draft done, but we'll have that there. I got I got the date when I'll have that, so people can look at the physical book and pre-order it, and then I'll be able to order it right after the convention and probably get it out in about a week or two after that. So. Wonderful. Dan and I do a web strip called Worldwide News, which is set at the uh, lowest rated cable news channel in in North America. And this is the first hundred strips, so the convention is actually the debut of the book. Mm-hmm. And then I am going to be setting up and will be broadcasting via YouTube. I don't think I will do the whole 12 hours. Oh. I, was, I was at a convention um, about a week ago where... Uh, I, it was just me, and I learned that after five hours, I run out of things to talk about. So if I'm able to get people to come over and talk, like if I could get the creators or the cosplayers or the vendors or even the gamers to, to drop by, I can do more. But if it's just me talking, I've learned I tap out after about five hours because I get tired to listen to myself talk. D- Dan, here's, here's how uh, I was scraping the bottom of the barrel. Mm-hmm. I, I was making up questions from people. Yeah. <laughs> and I actually told the life story of Carl Burgos, the creator of the original Human Torch, and how by the end of his career he was working for some pretty scummy publishers. So, yeah, don't leave me alone. Don't, don't worry, Corey. <laughs> I'll be there, and I'll, I'll take up time, and my fans will, 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 of course, demand more time on the podcast. Normally, it'll be great. Well, that's good. Yeah. And what sort of programming are you going to have? I have not, like I said, I haven't been to a gaming convention. You, you said you got a big stage. What what sort of things are going to be on the big stage? Um, Dan is. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be filling some time. Um, and we should probably broadcast that, shouldn't we? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, whatever we want to do. Like, I don't, I don't know if I have like any cameras or anything. Oh, I've got. I have a laptop set up, and I just connect with YouTube. Oh, okay. And I just live stream. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got. Hold on. Let me let me see if I can't pull up the the event list here somewhere. I was just working on this last night. So Dan, it looks like we're going to have to fill time at this thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to do. I'm, I'm I'm all for it. <laughs> well, good. You know, we we can see how good we are at uh, all those years of watching. Uh, Whose line is it anyway? Exactly. Are you kidding? Most of my stuff I do improv. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried to improv while drawing, but it just it was too fast and hurt my wrist. Oh. Uh, mm. Whoa. Hello? Uh oh. I got a phone call at the store, guys. Hold on one second. Okay. I can answer it. Oh, on our game. <laughs> yes. I was wondering if you had that one game by that one person that was really fun. <laughs> No, I, I need you to answer me, though. Are you, where'd you go? Oh, no. Hey, hey, do, do, hey, do you, hey. Do you have the first edition of the Ghostbusters role-playing game? I'm not sure. Hold on. I'm going to get over to our Pokemon guy here. I doubt anybody's got okay. that game. Okay. I do. Wait a minute. He answered you. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we know who the star of the show is there, Wolfie. Yeah, give me, give me, ah. All right. Well, I've been doing this for 260-some episodes. How many podcasts have you done, Wolfie? Like five? I've done 322. Just don't try to look them up. Okay. Okay. I was going to say, where are they? On your phone? No. um, I I don't record them. I do them at night, and (laughs) I just stare at a computer and talk. That's what I did before I started doing the podcast. (laughs) I just would talk to myself. And your computer would start talking back, wouldn't it? No, no, I, the drugs didn't kick in. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm back here. Hey, right. We're making up questions for you while you were gone. Oh, so. Uh-oh, okay. <laughs> uh, 
You know, because somebody called us like, yeah, do you have the first edition of the Ghostbusters role-playing game from 1985? Uh, no. I have uh, the newest Ghostbusters, like, RPG in a box type of game. <laughs> Cause, uh, well, when I was in college, any new game that came out, if it was a movie we liked, it was like, okay, we're playing it. Oh, no. <laughs> I wish that's how it was now. <laughs> oh, man, there's a movie coming out about this? I'll just get a bunch of these and they'll sell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, they haven't made a Transformer role-playing... Oh, my God, I need to make a Transformer role-playing game. There you go. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> License to print money, Dan. <laughs> I'll just call it till all are one. <laughs> and you're you're going to have a cosplay contest? Yes, yes, we are having a cosplay contest. I think that's probably, like the main thing that I think people are going to be showing up for. Like, yeah, we put a lot of work into it, you know, a lot of you know, rounding up the judges. Uh, we've been promoting it a lot. Um, so, yeah, I think that's going to be, like, one of our main main attractions this year for sure is a cosplay contest, which has never really been done up here before. So I think a lot of people are super excited not to have to travel a really far distance to go participate in something like this. And I, I've only been up to the St. Cloud area a couple of times. I've gone to the, uh, um, what is it, Granite City Comics on, on Free Comic Book Day for the past couple of years. Okay. How big is the gaming community there? I think it's, I think it's uh, pretty yeah, sizable, actually. You know, like, it's definitely growing in popularity. Um, you know, board games, like all the card games, Magic, Pokemon's exploding right now again, you know, even with the card game. Um, yeah, so I, I think we have a pretty large and diverse uh, community of gamers and, and all-around nerds, I guess. Gamers are ruling the world now! Yeah, you know, there's definitely, you know, been a shift, you know, since I've been doing this. And, like, yeah, it's it's gaining a lot of mainstream popularity. And I don't know if that has to do with, like, all of the uh, the, uh, the comic book movies and stuff that are coming out. But, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's good to hear. I know that the European board games like uh, Ticket to Ride and Settlers of Catan, they used to be just in gaming stores, and now I see them, you know, on sale at Amazon with you know discounts and and at Target and places like that. So, does that bring in people who've played those games and are looking for similar board games? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, like uh, I like to call them, you know, you know, our gateway games. You know, those are the ones that kind of just creep you in into the hobby, you know, and then you get into the more uh, uh, complex ones, you know, your talisman, your relic, your your shadows over brimstone, you know, like the big, the big intimidating ones that you probably normally wouldn't, you know, even bat an eye at if you're just starting, but yeah, after you get into Catan and the Ticket to Ride and Carcassonne, then you start building your way up into the, into the niche. And then just for for my edification, I I played war games, mm-hmm. and it seemed to me that well Avalon Hill doesn't exist anymore if I remember right, but when they moved into like computer games, the board games actually faded away. Is there still a war gaming contingent? Um, like uh, explain a little bit further. Like Squad Leader and. Um, you know, the, Av- the old classic Avalon Hill type games. Oh, okay. So, yeah, just kind of like that wargaming type feel and stuff. Yeah. Um, there, you know, there's like different uh, different styles. I know Avalon Hill was bought by Wizards of the Coast a while back, and they discontinued a lot of the, the, the you know, Axis and Allies stuff, and they kind of just made it into one kind of bulk type of deal, like... You can still get, like, Axis and Allies and stuff like that, but it's really opened up to, like, different markets. You know, you got, like, your Rivet Wars, you got, you know, your Warhammer, your Warhammer 40K, you know. So there's definitely an outlet for people that still want to play, you know, like those Command and Conquer style games. And then, you know, you're in a gaming store right now. What would you say are the top three role-playing games? Top three role-playing yeah, um, I it's definitely you know Pathfinder D and D and then uh, the Fantasy Flight 
uh, Star Wars role playing uh, RPG. So those are definitely my top three sellers for like RPGs where you get a book and read and pencil and paper and stuff like that. Yeah. And for people who who haven't played in forever or just have never played and been interested, are you going to have areas where they can you know here's how to learn how to play Dungeons and Dragons? Um, yeah, so like a lot of the scenarios and stuff that we're running through Pathfinder Society and um, the D and D Adventures, the D and D Adventure League, they're all going to be you know starter scenarios that have uh, a lot of that'll bring a lot of interest to beginners and new people. You'll be able to pick up pre-generated characters and kind of work together with a party. And from my experience with, you know, working with role players and stuff, is they like getting new people, you know, into the group, into the game. So they're all very, very super helpful um, in explaining and, you know, telling you what dice you got to roll and what checks you got to make. So, I mean, later in the day, we're going to have our more uh, uh, complex scenarios running. Like, we're going to have a few tables of quests and stuff like that for the more experienced players that want to play higher level characters. But uh, a lot of our stuff is based around, hey, even if you don't haven't played this, even if you don't even know what this is, you're able to jump in and play and have fun, you know, for the next two to four hours in this scenario. So I had a great joke for this, but I rolled a one. Yeah. <laughs> Critical fail. Yeah. At least, it, at least it was just a single bot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who played the old World, uh, world of Darkness stuff, yes, we we have experienced octobotches. <laughs> <laughs> Did we have a one one botch that actually destroyed the universe? Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never ever botch in the most critical point of a game. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it sounds like you've got all kinds of stuff going on. So, Justin, why don't you give us the sales pitch? Give us the hard pitch. The, the, the people who are listening who are within driving distance of St. Cloud, Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Or, or flying. Because there are some people who listen overseas and some people who listen down in Louisiana and some people who listen in, in San Diego. They may not make it in time. Mm-hmm. They should. I know they should. They should because LionCon is awesome, and I'm going to be there, and I'm awesome, and you can put up with Corey, and it'll be great. <laughs> you can tolerate Corey for for a short period of time as you pass by and go see Dan. I mean, like, you know, we just had a couple, actually quite a few people just register last night from Chicago. Oh, cool. I thought that was a ways away, and I'm like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. The lone dot. Over in Chicago, you know, <laughs> all the other dots around Minnesota and Wisconsin, you know. <laughs> so give us your sales pitch. Do the hard sell. All right. Well, I mean, it, this is a convention, and this is going to be something brand new for the area. You know, I don't think anything like this has been done north of the cities in quite some time. So I want everybody to come in and enjoy themselves, participate in some games, you know, check out all the sweet vendors, all of our sponsors, see what all of them have to offer, because I think I got, you know, a pretty fantastic lineup of, of guests, vendors, uh, sponsors, and uh, I need I need feedback. So the more people that come in, the more people that are having a good time or they're not having a good time, you know, they can let us know so then we can keep building this every year, because my, my goal and my dream is to have, you know, that the attendees be face-to-face with their famous, you know, with famous people, you know, their their fandoms. I want them to be face-to-face with these uh, game designers and developers, you know, and I want to bring in, you know, video games, actually. You know, I want Blizzard to be there. I want to see, you know, Overwatch being played. You know, I want to see some, some competitive, you know, gaming happening. Um, so, I mean... Everybody that, you know, is having, like, offset feelings, they don't know. There's going to be something that I think everybody can enjoy here this year, but I need people to come and help me make it better next year. Well, that'll be great. It's going to be a lot of fun. Remember that uh, you go to the YouTube, and I'm going to be broadcasting. Dan will be helping me out. Hopefully we'll have some other people helping me out because we don't want me just talking. 
So, <laughs> all right, now, what we're going to do is we're going to tell you Lion Con is coming next Saturday, August 27th, from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Justin, where is it at? It is at the River's Edge Convention Center in St. Cloud, Minnesota. River Edge, yes, Convention Center. you got to go at 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. People are going to be there. I'm going to be there. Corey's going to be there. Uh, as we said, Pathfinder Society, cause we're going to do Pokemon Go. We're going to do cosplay. you got to be there. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it'll be awesome yet. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Too bad we can't do the sound effects we could do like the old uh, race car things were. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday at the River's Edge Convention Center. <laughs> Nitro burning funny cars. <laughs> I don't even think my radio ads uh, sound that cool. <laughs> I think, you know, I think we have, like, some war drums in the background or something like Aaron. Well, I guess you guys will meet Aaron at some point in time, but uh, he's a Steel Toe Morning Show uh, host. He's actually going to be at LionCon, too. He's going to be doing a comedy show, uh, I think, at about 1.30 there, so that'll be pretty good. Awesome. Well, cool. It sounds like there's a whole bunch of stuff. It's not just gaming. I know that uh, we've got a couple of comic artists who are going to be there. We've got all sorts of vendors with all sorts of stuff. It, it's going to be fun for everybody who shows up. And come on, it's a cloud. What else are you going to do? <laughs> what else are you going to do? Are, are you going to just sit in your house and stare at the TV and hope that Netflix drops a new series? They're not going to. They're not. You know, I made this. I made this cool thing last night, and I was, I was giving it to my customers, and I said, "What do you think about this for a Lion Con tagline?" And I said, "Lion Con, the coolest thing to come to St. Cloud since Stevo, without the past or current drug addictions." There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Justin, we're gonna let you get back to running your store. And and now that we're back, oh, nobody will remember that I was setting up for you to talk about your time at uh, at, at the source. First off, do you have any good Nick stories from the source? Because Nick was one of these guys, and I've talked about it a lot. He loved, to, much like improv, he loved to say yes, but he said yes so much that he couldn't keep track of everything. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any good Nick stories from Nick being your boss? Well, not really. And the reason for that is that at the time that I was there, uh, Nick Nick was part of the source, but he was kind of that, that guy that showed up every once in a while. Um, that <laughs> It was very funny because at the time I only worked uh, weekends, usually Sundays, and um, – because I had a full-time job as well. But the thing is, Nick was this guy that would come in, yell at Bob, who I thought was the owner, of which I, of course, found out later he wasn't. But like, <laughs> He's not? Huh? Well, he's, I, he's, like, I, he, he's the manager, and now he's a part owner. But the actual owner is from out of state. I thought it was him and Nick that owned it. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have learned something today. No, um, and I'm trying to remember what the guy's name is who owns it. And the thing is, uh, of course, this is from <clears throat> 20 years ago. Um, so Don't do the math. Yeah, the guy may have died and you know passed it on because the guy was kind of old when I met him. <laughs> um, but I met him once. Um, but he was like – he lived in like New Jersey or something like that. And um, Bob and Nick were the – Man, the co-managers. Um, Bob was originally the main manager, and then the owner brought Nick in for his uh, expertise in comics. Because Bob, okay. Bob was more the game gamer kind of guy. Now, if people who are who work at the source now, you know, refute this and tell me I'm wrong, I will go with that. But <laughs> this is what I remember when I was there. <laughs> Because it's a, a little part of uh, a hot comics history. Yeah. There was a point when Nick came to Joe and said, uh, yeah, 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 uh, Joe, there's this guy who's looking to invest in a comic shop. Would you want to be in touch with them? And Joe, who had just got out of his partnership with Pat, was like, ah, I don't know if I want to – hold on. I don't know if I want to have a partner. I kind of like doing it on my own. I don't like other people watching what I do. I I want to run the shop the way I want to run the shop. 
<laughs> and then a few months later, we heard that Nick had bought into the source. Okay. So I don't know if those are connected or in, in any way, shape, or form, or if Nick was the guy. That's been our theory all along, but uh, there you go. That's actually probably what it was, in all honesty, because what it was is Nick came in, and he was he was the comic section of the source. And he knew all about what was going on, and he, you know everybody was like, well, if you need to talk about comics, you go to Nick. Nick is the one that knows all this. It's like, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> if you need anything, you go to Nick. I'm like, okay. He's like, but you guys brought me in for my gaming knowledge. Oh, yeah, that's right. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, uh, so, but Nick was, Nick, I, I only saw like two or three times um, when I worked there um, because he would usually come in during the week. and But it was usually he was coming in like a train, you know, and looking to run somebody over. <laughs> that was Nick. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like, oh, okay. I got to know him much more after I um, uh, was no longer actually at the source and I was doing my own art and stuff like that and started going to SpringCon and stuff like that. And I was able to, he and I talked more. I mean, he's a great guy. He was a great guy. Sorry. Um, but, uh, yeah, at the time when I was actually at the source, I didn't I didn't really run into him all that much, except for to jump out of his way. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't really have any stories from the source with him, um, other than that. So, <laughs> any tales from the shop? Any uh, funny customers? Weird stuff that happened? Uh, anything like that? <laughs> Well, we had one. It was really great. Uh, the, I was I was working, and Hans, uh, one of the other guys there, he's an ex marine, um, and it was there. And a uh, couple kids ran out with uh, training cards, and Hans went after him. And I'm like, oh, I wonder how that's going to end. And about five minutes later, he comes walking in with a bike. <laughs> And I'm looking at him, he's like, yeah, one of the kids ditched his bike. If he wants it back, he's got to come back for it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and, and, and did he come back for the bike, or was it a loss? Um, he, he didn't come back that day. And <laughs> okay. um, I, I don't actually remember if they came back, but I think we had that bike back there for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> Kid comes back, he's 30. Yeah, yeah I like my bike back. <laughs> Here are your cards. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was just funny because he did. He was very I mean, when he went out, he you could tell he was bad, but when he came back in, he was just kind of like it was like casual. Yeah, I yeah. his bike, you know, if he wants it back, he'll have to come in. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> So. Well, uh, normally after we do a hang, in, uh, tales from the shop, I do a hang in at the home. Go for it. Um, okay. But okay. last, oh, first off, Corey, do you have any stories from hanging at the home? <laughs> first off, uh, I I've been working at the group home to the point where uh, let's see, Monday night I come into work Monday night, mm -hmm. and I've been doing a lot of sleeping overnights, and you know everybody says, oh well, you get to sleep. Well, kinda. Yeah. First off, you're either sleeping on a couch or I'm sleeping on an inflatable mattress. I'm sleeping on a balloon. Yeah. And um, if anything happens, like, you know, somebody gets out of bed and needs help, you have to get up. If somebody, most of the overnight staff who uh, I've been working with aren't med, med passers, so if somebody needs, like, you know, aspirin or, or something like that, I need to get up and give them their medication. And let me be honest with you. You don't get up. Pop out of bed, give a medication, write it all up, and go right back to sleep. Okay, no, that, that that's not how it works. <laughs> but um, last Monday I'm at work, and well, last Sunday I I didn't work at the group home overnight, even though they kept trying to get me to work. And uh, one of the things I did, I was mixing the podcast last Sunday, and I have a nice little bottle of bourbon that I'd bought a few weeks before with 
you know, the fact that my checks are so big. So I had some nice bourbon. Now, I'm mixing the podcast, and I just take my little shot glass, and I go, you know what, let's put some bourbon in my Diet Coke. Bloop. And then after I was done, it's like, well, cool. If they call, I can't work because I've been drinking. Uh-huh. And I decided I have not been drunk since 2009. And I proceeded to have a, a few more uh, bourbon and Cokes and uh, a few beers. And those of you who follow me on the social media know that chaos ensued. <laughs> social media, nothing. He texted me directly. <laughs> There were a few people I texted. I actually, my uh, former roommate slash uh, foster daughter, Sharon, I said, here's my Facebook password. If I post anything stupid or embarrassing or that will hurt someone, please delete it. I have never known you not to post something embarrassing. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Only about me. Well, yeah. <laughs> and that's usually, and that's usually a picture. <laughs> but you know, people can use them to scare the rats out of their attic. This is true. But so it was my way of not working. <laughs> <laughs> it was the only way I could think of to get a day off. Because they did actually call and go, "Can can you come in and work the sleeping overnight?" I'm like, "Not tonight." <laughs> Why? Well, I, I've had a few. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> And I had the next two nights off. And, of course, I get into work at the full-time job. My email, bing, like 8.10. The office at the group home opens at 8, 8.10. Uh, Corey, is there any way you could do a sleeping overnight tonight? Oh. And I looked out on the schedule because the schedule, they, they do a schedule thing where you can look. And I go, well, uh, what cottage is it in? Because all the cottages are full. Oh, it's in this one. And um, you may be filling all of her shifts. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, I come in that night, and I find out that one of the overnight staff has quit. And I, when I wake up that morning, another of the overnight has, staff have quit during the night. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so last night I get in, and they're shorthanded, but it's my regular cottage. So it's the regular clients I'm used to. And normally I come in, you know, a little before 10, before I punch in read up on what's been going on, they're in bed, I get the, nope, everybody was up. Oh, no. Because it was two staff who'd never worked in that cottage before. <laughs> and I get in, and one of them just looks at me and goes, oh, thank God. <laughs> and pulls me into the bedroom and goes, I don't understand what's going on with this, 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 this. Basically, she, and I had to explain, all right, they're creatures, I don't want to, this sounds almost insulting. They're creatures of habit. They have to do their routines mm-hmm. before they go to bed. Yeah. And you have not let them do their routines. So let's have them do their routines. You know, Shelly needed to do this. Billy needed to do that. Wendy needed to do this. Boom, 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 boom. After an hour, myself and the awake overnight staff, we get them all in bed. Mm. Well, except for one who didn't trust his roommate because he couldn't find one of his shirts, even though he was wearing it. Yes. My roommate stole my black and green checkered shirt. No, you're wearing it. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Look at your arm. And the other, his roommate didn't want to go to bed because this guy was mad at him, so he's sitting there in the living room, okay. which is where I sleep, on the couch. Right. And it's dark. <laughs> my bed. And I'm using my tablet to read some comics, and he's just staring at me. (laughs) And about every five minutes, I go, "Um, would you please go to bed? I want to get some sleep. Until it was midnight, and I went, it's become really creepy that you're just sitting there staring at me and have done so for an hour. You need to go to bed. (laughs) All right, then. And he gets up and goes to bed. An hour later, his roommate is in his wheelchair up and making as much noise as he can in the hallway trying to go to the bathroom. (coughs) So the awake staff comes and helps him and does all this. And then um, he gets in his room and I hear, I want to go in the living room and watch TV. (laughs) No. No, you can't go in the living room and watch TV. Corey's sleeping in there. Why don't we turn your TV on? No, I want a bigger TV. So I get to listen to them argue for a half hour. (laughs) 
then around 5 o'clock, and he, not the first time he's done this, thump, wheelchair against the couch. <laughs> Are you awake? I want to watch TV. <laughs> now, normally I would go, yes, I'm awake, but you can't watch TV yet. Instead, I rolled over and kept my mouth shut. <laughs> so he probably just sat there and stared at me for another half hour before I finally got up. <laughs> You know who's not going to stare at you for a half hour waiting for you to wake up? Um, Our sponsors? That's right! <gasps> yes, here at Solitaire Rose Networks, we have ads. That's right, we have ads. Just like every other podcast. Come on, it's okay. Our first advertiser is our longest-running advertiser, and that's DreamHost.com. DreamHost.com is the best bar none web host all over the interwebs. You could go to other web hosts. You could go to the ones that have big ads on TV and everything, and they're not going to give you the service, the dependability, and and the reliability of DreamHost. Head on over to DreamHost.com, use the code CRAZY, K-R-A-Y-Z, and get $20 off your first year of web hosting. Another of our sponsors is Dollar Shave Club. Dollar Shave Club has great blades at low prices, and let's face it, you got to shave. Head over to shaved.by slash C19DC, get you some blades, they're wonderful, I use them, I use all of our sponsors. Matter of fact, head on over to crazycomics.com, over on the right hand side of the page you'll see all of our sponsors, Bombas, Grays, Flaviar, Dollar Shave Club, and DreamHost. If you would like to advertise on any of the podcasts in the Solitaire Rose Network, you can just email solitairerosenetwork at gmail.com, subject advertising. And normally now we would ask Joe what's going on on the Ebays, but uh, no Joe. Well, I can tell you what's going on on the Ebays. I've... Oh, right. Dan! Yeah. What's going on on the Ebays? Oh, it's amazing. People are buying stuff and selling stuff, and people are bidding on stuff, and things are going well for some people, and crappy for other people and um then there's you know feedback which is awesome with a plus plus and f's and all of that and then we get to the the shipping part of it which is amazing because it's so boring and then you get stuff in the mail if you actually bought something but if you didn't then you're not and if you go to joe's stuff which i'm sure is on there because he always has stuff on there um you can buy stuff from him, and you can get insulted by him, I'm sure. And because if you ask him to, I'm sure he'll come up with something amazing, because <laughs> everything is amazing on eBay. And Weird Al made a song about it. I, I miss the crickets. Keep, 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 keep. <laughs> <laughs> well, since we don't have that, <laughs> why don't we go to freaking and geeking? Dan? What? What are you freaking on? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, on Thursday morning, I was going to work. Oh, yeah. that's t I, I understand that. I freak out every morning when I leave work and go to work. Now, I had an early meeting, and I was really worried about making sure that I made said early meeting. And I got in, and I got out of my car and locked the door, shut the door, and realized the car was still running. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I missed my meeting because I was waiting for the locksmith to come and unlock my door. <laughs> um, and then get my keys out. And then yesterday, same car, hit this huge pothole. And I was worried. It's like, oh, no, I'm going to blow a tire. Okay, everything seems fine. The car's still handling okay. Nothing's wrong. Eight hours later... Suddenly there was thump 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 thump. Oh no! So right before this podcast, I was running that tire over to a, <laughs> over to Firestone, and they're replacing it now. <laughs> <laughs> and so I have spent about four hundred dollars on my car this weekend, and all I'm getting is a brand new tire. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's what I'm freaking on. Corey. <laughs> <laughs> what are you freaking on? Uh, well, uh, 
there's some stuff going on in my personal life, and I actually did a podcast a while back, a solo podcast about my anxiety issues. And my anxiety issues, because of this personal issue, have gone through the roof. And I don't know if it's because of the personal issue. I don't know if it's because of the number of hours I'm working. I don't know if it's because I don't sleep in my house anymore. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I don't think it's fair that when uh, Peter Parker has this issue, they call it spider sense, and it's a superpower. And when I have it, it's called a panic attack. (laughs) Well... The difference is when his spider sense goes off, then the Green Goblin actually does come through the wall. When you have it, you just stare at the wall for a couple hours waiting for it to happen. <laughs> but it is that feeling of, oh my god, something something is something bad is about to happen. And it's that fight or flight response. Mm-hmm. And it, 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 I like to call them cascading panic attacks. Because when you have just one, that's okay. But when it comes and then it starts to fade and comes back and starts to fade and come back and starts to fade and come back. And I've done all of the stuff you're supposed to do. I do the crisis breathing. I do the meditation. I do the yoga. I go to the gym and none of those are helping. So um, I, I, I get medical coverage in a couple of weeks. So we'll see what that does. But the, the there, there's a positive thing about the uh, panic attacks. Yes. Boy, you do whatever you can to distract yourself. Yes, you do. <laughs> um, so uh, Friday, it was very slow at the full-time job, and I kept asking for work, and they would send me stuff, and I would be done with it like within th- three to five minutes. Of course. To the point where my supervisor came over and said, all right, you can do your quality stuff. Done. Oh, you could do the message center stuff. Done. Uh, you could do this. Uh, done. <laughs> <laughs> You could quality check. Yes, I've already quality checked all the people in my group that I'm supposed to quality check by the end of the month. <laughs> uh, Corey? Yes. I can distract you. Uh, Wolfie? Yeah. I wrote a 3,500 word short story. <laughs> what, what, what fun is that for me? Well, you'll get to read it. Ooh. Paper cuts. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there was that. Uh, Comic-wise, my Box Day box was delayed until this week. Oh, no. (laughs) It was two weeks late because of the group home resident who took my wallet for a couple of days. Oh, no. (laughs) Long-time listeners know that uh, I lost my wallet one night on one of my overnight shifts, and I had to cancel all of my credit cards and my debit card and everything. Mm Mm-hmm. And then the day after I'd done that, found out that one of the group home clients had actually taken it and put it in her bag of toys. <laughs> so I got it back with all the credit cards that were utterly worthless. But at least, you know, now I have a driver's license and a, and a social security card and the gift cards I keep for emergencies. So, yeah. But yeah, my uh, box day was delayed for two weeks because of that. And uh, that means I didn't get my new comics till hopefully later today. <laughs> Uh, what Dan? Yeah. You pull me out of this tailspin. What are you geeking on? Oh, I, I'm geeking on your pain. Most people do. <laughs> I am glad that my my I am glad that my tortured existence gives entertainment to those around me. I live to serve, ladies and gentlemen. It is such an uplifting experience to listen to your life and go, "Wow, I, I could be worse." <laughs> Most people do. <laughs> uh-huh. Most people do. Uh, they they go, wow. Y- y- I thought my life was shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what am I geeking on? Okay, well, uh, I, I got, I'm geeking on a few things. Uh, I just started playing a new game um, called No Man's Sky. It came out actually yesterday, um, or actually, sorry, a week ago yesterday, um, and. Uh, it's an open world uh, universe ex- exploration game uh, to the point where everything is kind of randomly generated as you move throughout. So, okay, I've heard of games like yeah, that. Yeah, it's totally unending, uh, or it's supposed to be unending unless you follow the specific storyline, which you don't have to do. Um, <laughs> uh, 
uh, and it's uh, it, I haven't get, played much of it, but it sounds like it's going to be really cool, and the visuals are got, are neat, and uh, and just having to go out and try, try to survive as you just play the game is really interesting. Like you have to make sure you keep your life support you know powered, <laughs> and if you don't, well, <clears throat> bad things tend to happen without life support. Um, that's that that's cool. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, recently, uh, I'm half geeking on Suicide Squad. I saw that, and that was it. Wasn't like you know. Oh my God! This is an amazing movie, but I liked it. It was a fun little, you know, fun couple hours. So, I I would suggest seeing it if you like, you know, the the uh, universe. And it was so much better than Batman versus Superman. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, if you want, if you compare it to the two, you are going to love Suicide Suicide Squad. Is going to be Titanic compared to Batman versus Superman. Okay, this was cinema. Beyond belief compared to Bat Cinema Paradise. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I got, saw that and that was good. I'm I'm definitely geeking on um, uh, Lion Con because I think we're going to have a lot of fun at that. And, well, let's hope so. Yes. Well, if if anything, we'll make it fun. Um, I have confidence in our ability to make at least it fun for each other, if not for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the people watching won't have fun. Maybe the people there won't have fun. But by God, we're going to have fun. Exactly. <laughs> um, and it'll be the first physical contact I've had in a while because Wolfie's always trying to molest me. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. So you, you'll probably get a lot of physical contact th- this weekend. Uh, oh, God. Uh, I mean, you know, especially because it's going to be videoed. I mean, he is so, so into that. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Corey? What are you geeking on? Uh, Comic-wise, it's going to be an all-comic geeking. Ooh. Uh, First, there is a new series from the creative team of my favorite, uh, a number of my favorite series, Criminal, Fatal. Yes, uh, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips have a new book out called Kill or Be Killed. Okay. It is a crime comic. It is a horror comic. It is a action comic, all at the same time, and it normally a first issue is setting things up, and I think a lot of comic creators have a lot of trouble with a first issue anymore. This first issue made me go, I need the rest of this right now. Oh, nice. Uh, the lead character is not a typical crime comic lead character. But I, it, it works. It really works. And Brubaker's one of these guys who, he did the death of Captain America. He did the um, immortal Iron Fist. He, his run on Batman was fantastic. I love the fact that he's gone over to Image and is doing these, I don't want to call them short run, but they're limited run books. They run, you know, between 12 and 30 issues to tell a complete story. And this one is, it knocks it out of the park with the very first issue. It's well worth picking up. Um, another book that I got all caught up on was Moon Knight. Jeff Lemire is doing Moon Knight. And it's a completely new take because it opens with Mark Spector in an asylum because he's crazy. Uh, Dan, you've read Moon Knight before, right? Yeah, I've read the character. Okay, so you know he's multiple personality? Yeah. Well, maybe Moon Knight wasn't real. Oh. (laughs) Okay. And the way he tells the story, you know, the first five issues tell one complete story. By the end of it, it sets kind of a new status quo. But through the entire thing, you're going to be questioning. You, you... It's a, one of those books you don't know where it's going. Oh, nice. You have no idea where it's going without violating anything in the past. It actually pays a lot of homage to the the series with um, that Doug Mensch and Bill Sienkiewicz did in the late 70s, early 80s, and deals in that surreality that Sienkiewicz l- was drawing in at the time. So I, Warren Ellis's run was really good because it – was doing these one-issue stories that change the character. This changes the character again, but it still fits. Nice. Um, 
I got all caught up on Walking Dead. Oh, yeah. They have started the Whisper War. And um, you would think, this comic's been going for 157 issues. You would think they can't do anything to shock you, right? (laughs) Uh, Issue 156, I was reading it and got to the last three pages and went, Holy, holy, oh, ah, holy fucking Jesus shit! (laughs) (laughs) And um, it's... The Whisper War is going to be a lot different from the All Out War they did a few years ago. This is, um, and it shows that Kirkman is not afraid to turn things on its head. So, for all the people who've been saying, "Oh, you Walking Dead's kind of boring lately," you got to remember he has the slow part so that when big things happen, they have more impact. Right. That 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 that's what you do. And then the last comic that I jumped all over, I finally got all caught up on all new, all different Avengers, which is the Avengers book that's written by Mark Wade. Um, Alex Ross did some co-plotting and does the covers. And it's Tony Stark and some younger characters, but it also has the Vision and the female Thor. And I remember reading the first issue and going, ah, it's okay. But when I sat down and read The Twelve, because issue 12 came out a while back, when I sat down and read the first 12. This is some really good stuff. It, it, while it's not classic Avengers, it's classic Marvel superhero teams. Mm-hmm. And I really enjoyed it. It was, a, it was not just fun to read, but it showed that Mark Wade. well, Wade's best known for being able to use classic characters. But he made the new Nova, a character that I'm really fond of now. He understands and uses the new Ms. Marvel. Um, the only character he really hasn't done a lot of work with is the ultimate Spider-Man, Miles Morales, who's in the book but has kind of been to the side. Okay. And I'm looking forward to when he focuses on Miles Morales, too, because he finds a new hook to kind of give you a new perspective on that character and make you like them more. Let's remember that he's the guy who made Wally West into people's favorite characters when before Wally West was just, oh yeah, he's the guy who took over for Barry Allen. By the time Mark Wade left, Wally West was a beloved character. And he's doing the same thing at Marvel, and I really hope that he gets a good long run on these books. Very cool. Well, believe it or not, kids, you've listened to us blather on about funny books for an hour and a half. No. Yes. No. And, and games. And games. And uh, all sorts of other stuff. I can talk about other stuff. Well, why don't we do that at the convention, Wolfie? Because we're going to have time to fill. It's 12 hours. I don't know if they're 18 or over or not. Well, then we just talk about it on camera. Ooh. Uh, and we tell the kids to go away. I can, I can do stuff on camera. I'm good at that. Okay. Yeah. And as we say every week, the comic we like the least, we still like better than the comic that you like the most. Dan? Yes? Do you have a closing for us? I miss the crickets. (laughs) Uh, Let's see. Hold on. Closing, closing. All right. um, Say goodnight, Corey. Goodnight, Corey.